Buckle up, fellow space travellers. Let's head together into the mesmerising world of 1990s space opera, where galaxies collide, civilizations clash, and epic adventures and daring escapades await. A Fire Upon the Deep by Werner Vinge is an epic space opera set in a galaxy divided into zones of thought, based on the density of the stars in the zone. Each zone has its own rules of physics, or rather has limits on what's possible, which in turn limits civilizational development, starfaring, levels of intelligence and technology. Closest to the galactic core lies the slow zone, where intellect is limited and the speed of light reigns supreme. And in the beyond, where faster than light travel is possible, numerous intelligent races thrive, spread across many star systems and aspiring to the godlike powers of the transcend zone. The story kicks off with the human scientists from the Stromly realm, the only human civilization in the high beyond, the result of a long ago slower than light generation ship, as they try to salvage a five billion year old data archive in the low transcend, hoping for unimaginable riches. However, their actions inadvertently awaken and release an imprisoned dormant superintelligence, which becomes known as the Blight, which threatens to engulf the galaxy in its malevolent grasp. As the Blight begins its destructive spree, a desperate escape ensues, with the survivors fleeing aboard two ships, one carrying adults, quickly destroyed by the Blight as a threat, and the other carrying children in suspended animation, which the Blight does not consider to be a threat. Having escaped, they crash land on a medieval level planet, inhabited by telepathic, tool-using, dog-like aliens called Tynes, where warring factions vie for dominance. Meanwhile, in the middle beyond, a multi-species rescue mission is launched to intercept the surviving ship, led by human researcher Ravna and Pham, a being with a complex past, now integrated with a transcended power that's been mostly consumed by the Blight. But time is running out as the Blight's relentless pursuit threatens to engulf everything in its path. There are some awesome scenes set on the space station where Ravna is based. They only just escape with their lives. I really love the contrast between the broad scale of the Blight, the zones of thought, the billions caught in its destructive path, and the much more human scale of the children stranded with the tines and the small rescue party hurrying to their aid. There's some really great ideas in A Fire Upon the Deep. It has galactic weather which can cause zone boundaries to shift with dire consequences at times and it has transcended powers and it has some of the best aliens in science fiction in my view in the tines. Very sadly Werner Vinge died last week so if you haven't already read this most excellent book you can consider it to be an act of commiseration of respect even to read it now. I read it last year and, and I really loved it. There are two more books in the Zones of Thought series. A Deepness on the Sky is the second book, which is actually set 20,000 odd years before the events of A Fire Upon the Deep. And then the third is The Children of the Sky, which is a direct sequel to the first book. The Night Storm trilogy by Peter F. Hamilton consists of The Reality Dysfunction, The Neutronium Alchemist and The Naked God, which between them tally at over 3,000 pages. This is the widest of widescreen space operas, truly epic in scope. We're in the late 26th century and humanity has spread across hundreds of worlds in the Confederacy. There are Adamists and Edenists, two broad factions of humanity who have different views about biotech. The Adamists primarily live on planets and are base level humans. The Edenists are transhumans, improved in many respects, and they mostly hang out on living space habitats. The first book is a bit of a slow burn for the first two or three hundred pages as Hamilton sets things up, but things soon step up and the plot moves right along. With such a high page count, Hamilton has afforded the time to give us extraordinary detail, sometimes in the form of info dumps or exposition, and sometimes just as rich background to the events in the story. There's a huge cast of characters and many plot threads which you need to be on your toes to keep track of. The broad brushstrokes of the tale are that humanity is in big trouble. On one new colony world, Lalon, there's been an outbreak of something, I shan't say what, which is causing chaos there. The desperate attempts to contain it on Lalonde ultimately fail, a mix of accident and miscommunication, and the outbreak spreads like wildfire among the Confederacy. The rest of the book covers the spread, the impact on the richly described world, the refugees, the attempt to contain the spread, and the struggle to find a way to stop it and regain control. Peter F. Hamilton gets a bad rep in some quarters for clunky prose, info dumps, numerous badly written sex scenes, bloated plots and just for being way, way too long. And some of this is fair, but I don't care. There's more than a hint of golden age space opera pomp to his writing. Is Night Storm serious science fiction? No, not really. It doesn't examine the fundamental questions of existence or do anything especially new. Is it well written, literary science fiction? No, definitely not. Hamilton is no prose stylist, but to be fair, space opera has never been about those things. If you love epic scope, heroic characters, cool futuristic military technology, spaceships, advanced civilizations, aliens, 
all richly described in great detail, coupled with widespread chaos and disorder, and yet also very human scale stories, then these are the books for you. If you haven't read the Night's Dawn trilogy before, I'm very jealous. I couldn't believe how good these books were when I first read them 15 or 20 years ago. Now, and now I really want to read them again. In the sprawling expanse of the cosmos, humanity finds itself at the cusp of a new era of space exploration. In This Alien Shore by C.S. Friedman, the echoes of a tumultuous past reverberate through the stars as the legacy of Earth's ill-fated first attempts to colonise distant worlds still linger. Genetic mutations wrought havoc among the pioneers of old, casting them adrift in alien galaxies, their bodies and minds forever altered by the perils of interstellar travel. But hope glimmers on the horizon with the discovery of the revolutionary new FTL drive by Guerra, one of Earth's oldest colonies. Dubbed the Outships, these vessels offer humanity a chance to reclaim its birthright among the stars. However, the power to navigate these cosmic highways lies solely in the hands of the enigmatic Outspace Guild, Guardians of Galactic Transit, whose abilities border on the mystical. Yet the Guild's monopoly has not gone unchallenged. Ambitious corporations and rival factions vie for control of the stars, their insatiable greed driving them to unlock the secrets of the Guild's power. As tensions escalate, a deadly computer virus known as Lucifer threatens to plunge the galaxy into chaos, its digital tendrils striking at the very core of interstellar communication. Amidst this maelstrom of intrigue and danger, Jamisia, a young woman from Shido Habitat, finds herself thrust into a world of uncertainty and peril. Fleeing for her life, Jamisia discovers that she's the unwitting subject of a clandestine experiment, her mind harbouring secrets that could change the fate of the galaxy. Hunted by shadowy forces and haunted by the voices in her own mind, she must unravel the mysteries of her past and confront the truths that could reshape the fate of the cosmos. As Dr. Kiyo Masada embarks on a quest to combat the insidious threat of Lucifer, he delves into the darkest recesses of space where ancient secrets and hidden agendas threaten to unravel the fabric of reality itself. Against the backdrop of corporate greed and political machinations, Jamisia and Masada must navigate treacherous waters to safeguard the future of humanity. In this alien shore, Friedman paints a vivid picture of society teetering on the brink of upheaval, where the line between ally and enemy blurs amidst the chaos of the cosmos. With its richly drawn characters and pulse-pounding narrative, Friedman invites us on an exhilarating journey through the furthest reaches of space, where every decision carries weight and every revelation holds the key to survival. What are your favourite space operas of the 1990s? Do any of these float your boat? Do let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. Still to come, some more risky hyperspace tech, the Iron Bitch, a charismatic outlaw and an enigmatic discovery. In Stephen Donaldson's epic space opera series The Gap Cycle, readers are thrust into a universe teetering on the brink of chaos where power struggles, betrayal and redemption collide in a whirlwind of action and intrigue. The series of five books opens with a slender novel, The Gap Into Conflict, which serves as an introduction to some of the main characters that inhabit the rest of the story arc. In this universe, interstellar travel is possible using the gap drive, but it's hazardous. A small percentage of travellers get gap sickness. Symptoms vary, but they can blunt thinking ability and can result in insanity that can be triggered by different things such as high gravity. Donaldson intended this first book to explore three characters, a hero, a villain and a victim, and over the course of the book have them exchange roles as events progress. At the heart of the story is the villain of the piece, Angus Thermopylae, a ruthless pirate whose thirst for power knows no bounds. When he captures the beautiful but enigmatic Morn Highland, the victim, a former police officer, their fates become intertwined in a dangerous game of survival. As Angus seeks to exploit Morn for his own gain, she must navigate a treacherous landscape of deception and violence to reclaim her freedom. Walking into a bar together, Morn exchanges a brief glance with raffish pilot Nick Sarkuso, the hero. It's enough to set in motion a long-range plan to secure her rescue from Thermopylae. The gap into conflict is controversial now for its depiction of sexual violence and abuse against Morn, who Thermopylae controls via an illegal zone implant. She has gap sickness and he wants to be able to control her as she descends into insanity, potentially destroying him and his ship in the process. Thermopylae increasingly uses the zone implant to take advantage of Morn sexually. This is disturbing and deliberately so. I think Donaldson wanted to show Thermopylae's total control via the zone implant. While he is seemingly in control, Morn is in turn manipulating him, causing Angus to form an attachment which she later uses against him. Meanwhile, Nick Sarkuso is in pursuit and the story plays out with Angus ultimately needing to be rescued himself. The other four books follow a broader plot, Donaldson borrowing heavily from Wagner's ring cycle for structure. 
Against the backdrop of interstellar conflict and political machinations, a cast of compelling characters emerges, each with their own motivations and secrets. From the enigmatic space pilot Nick Sarkuso to the conflicted police commander Warden Dios, the players in this epic drama are as complex as they are compelling. As the story unfolds across multiple worlds and star systems, we're drawn deeper into a web of conspiracy and intrigue. From the corridors of power on Earth to the lawless frontier of the Amnion alien race, every twist and turn of the plot brings new revelations and unexpected challenges. But amidst the chaos and the turmoil, there are themes of redemption and sacrifice that shine through. As characters grapple with their own inner demons and confront the consequences of their actions, they're forced to confront the true nature of power and the meaning of loyalty. With its richly imagined universe and exciting action sequences and morally complex characters, the gap cycle is a thrilling ride from start to finish. Donaldson's masterful storytelling keeps readers on the edge of their seats as they race to uncover the secrets of the gap and the ultimate fate of humanity. In the distant reaches of the cosmos, Simon R. Green's Death Stalker unfolds amidst the corrupt remnants of a once mighty human empire. Here, power has morphed into tyranny, cruelty reigns supreme and oppression shadows every corner of existence. Across the galaxy, alien races cower in fear or face utter annihilation at the hands of the Emperor's iron-fisted rule, led by the notorious Iron Bitch Empress and a cadre of aristocratic clans, the Empire crushes dissent with merciless brutality, leaving no room for rebellion. Public spectacles and hollow rituals lull the masses into complacency, while corruption festers within the Empire's halls of power. The so-called Parliament serves as little more than a puppet, its autonomy crushed beneath the weight of imperial oppression. Looming over it all is the Church of Christ the Warrior, a tool of the throne wielding its own brand of martial authority. But amidst the darkness, a flicker of hope emerges. Historian Owen Deathstalker, scion of a once mighty warrior clan, finds himself thrust into a deadly game of survival. Branded an outlaw by the tyrannical Iron Bitch, Her Imperial Majesty, Owen's world shatters as he becomes the Empire's most wanted fugitive, hunted by star cruisers and mercenaries alike. With nowhere to turn and danger lurking, Owen must rely on his wits and the unlikely companions he gathers along the way. From a cunning ex-pirate to a resilient cyborg and a skilled bounty hunter, Owen forms a motley crew of outcasts and misfits in a desperate bid for survival. But mere allies won't be enough to thwart the Empire's iron grip on power. To stand a chance against the forces arrayed against him, Owen must confront his own legacy and embrace the mantle of his Deathstalker heritage. In a race against time, he sets his sights on the legendary Dark Void device, a mythical artifact that holds the key to toppling the corrupt regime. As Owen embarks on a perilous journey fraught with danger and uncertainty, he must summon every ounce of courage and cunning to navigate the treacherous waters of rebellion. For in the heart of darkness lies the promise of freedom, but also the looming spectre of death and destruction. With the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance, Owen Deathstalker must rise to the occasion and lead his ragtag band of rebels against overwhelming odds. In a battle for justice and redemption, he will confront his deepest fears and embrace the legacy of his ancestors, ready to unleash chaos and upheaval in his quest for liberation. Simon R. Green has a lot of fun with these books, throwing the kitchen sink at it in terms of space opera staples. There's an evil empire, clans, starships, an ensemble cast, a rebellion, aliens, alien tech, augmented humans, murderous vendettas, the works. At 600 pages, Deathstalker is merely the first part of the first episode. There are another seven books in total. Take Back Plenty by Colin Greenland propels us into a gripping space odyssey filled with danger, intrigue and cosmic adventure. Set in a future where humanity has expanded its reach across the galaxy, the story centres on Tabitha Jute, a bold and resourceful spaceship pilot on a mission fraught with peril. Tabitha is on the run, dodging planetary authorities, her pockets empty and her beloved starship Alice Liddell on the brink of being lost. But just when things seem bleak, a twist of fate brings millionaire showman Marco Metz to her doorstep. Offering a hefty reward, he enlists her to ferry him and his band to the distant behemoth, Plenty. However, Marco hides dark secrets. He's not just a flashy entertainer, he's the estranged father of two of the band members engaged in a taboo romance, and his motives are far from pure. His real aim? To snatch the frask, a coveted alien relic. As they soar through the cosmos, their journey takes a perilous turn. Encounters with the enigmatic Capellans, a race with a stranglehold on humanity's freedom beyond the solar system, plunge them into a web of intrigue and danger. Alongside her eclectic crew, including the enigmatic Mets and the quirky AI of her ship, Tabitha must rely on her wit, courage and determination to survive. Colin Greenland's vivid world building brings to life a universe teeming with diversity, from bustling space stations to desolate planets, each with its own unique culture and technology. The detailed descriptions immerse us in a rich tapestry of sights and sounds, adding depth and complexity to the story. With its fast-paced plot, vibrant characters and thought-provoking themes, Take Back Plenty is a thrilling ride from start to finish. Greenland's dynamic writing style and skillful storytelling keep us on the edge of our seats, eagerly turning pages to uncover the next twist and turn of the adventure. 
If you're a fan of classic science fiction adventure and crave an exhilarating tale of exploration and discovery, then Take Back Plenty delivers an unforgettable journey for you through the cosmos. In the gripping tale The Engines of God by Jack McDevitt, humanity's quest for survival takes centre stage amidst a backdrop of cosmic exploration and ancient mysteries. As Earth faces mounting environmental crises in the 23rd century, a team of intrepid xenoarchaeologists, led by the indomitable Priscilla Hutchins, or Hutch, embarks on a daring mission to unravel the enigma of the monument makers, a long lost civilization that once scattered colossal monuments across the cosmos. Their journey leads them to the desolate planet of Karaka, where the remnants of an ancient society hold tantalizing clues to the monument makers' identity. Racing against time as terraforming efforts loom, the team unearths the Temple of the Winds, forging connections between distant worlds and shredding light on a civilization shrouded in mystery. But the path to discovery is fraught with peril. Tragedy strikes as they lose esteemed archaeologist Richard Wald, fueling their determination to unlock the secrets of the cosmos. Driven by a cryptic message and a relentless pursuit of truth, Hutch and her team set their sights on Beta Pacifica, a distant star system teeming with the enigmatic anomalies. As they navigate treacherous space, facing deadly encounters and unexpected alliances, they inch closer to a revelation that could alter the course of humanity's fate. From ancient ruins to celestial wonders, the Engines of God is a riveting odyssey of discovery and survival, where the line between past and future blurs amidst the vast expanse of the universe. With each twist and turn, McDevitt's masterful storytelling propels us on a thrilling journey of cosmic proportions, reminding us of the boundless mysteries that await beyond the stars. In a departure from his usual culture science fiction universe, Against the Dark Background by Ian M. Banks is a thrilling journey through a richly imagined universe where despair and decay have settled upon the isolated Galter system. The main protagonist, Lady Sharrow, finds herself hunted by the Hoos, a religious cult determined to end her bloodline. To escape their one-year assassination order, she embarks on a daring quest to recover the last lazy gun, an ancient weapon of mass destruction. Joined by her former combat team, Sharrow navigates a world teeming with eccentric characters and dangerous relics from past civilizations. As they journey across Galter and its neighbouring planets, they encounter bizarre landscapes including cities built on rafts of ships and continents covered by vast plants. Along the way, they uncover clues to the Lazy Gun's whereabouts, facing off against adversaries and overcoming obstacles that test their courage and resourcefulness. The Lazy Gun itself is a fascinating and unpredictable weapon, capable of wreaking havoc in surreal and humorous ways upon its targets. From thermonuclear blasts to bizarre transformations, its powers defy logic and add a sense of unpredictability to the story. As Shara ranges deeper into her quest, she confronts her own past and the dark history of Galta, revealing layers of intrigue and betrayal that threaten to consume her. With each step closer to the lazy gun, the stakes grow higher, and Shara must confront the true motives of those around her, including her own cousin, who harbours secrets of his own. Filled with action, suspense, and Banks's trademark imagination, against a dark background is a captivating blend of science fiction and adventure. Set against a backdrop of cosmic despair and societal decay, it explores themes of survival, redemption, and the enduring quest for meaning in a universe filled with darkness. And with that, fellow space adventurers, our journey through the galaxies of 1990s space opera comes to an end. But fear not, the stars will still be there when you're ready for your next cosmic adventure. And until then, May your warp drives be swift and your bookshelves be filled with interstellar wonders. Safe travels and you can watch this while you're on your way. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, goodbye for now.